neighborhood shared by college students and families just south of Colorado State University, Jordan Hancock sat in the back of an SUV full of his friends. The 19-year-old son of the Denver mayor, Michael Hancock, was home from an Atlanta-area college on break September 28th, and the group was leaving its second party of the night when shots rang out. Just an arm's length away from Hancock, in the second row of the vehicle, Jalen Robinson, 19, lay slumped, arms extended out the back window of the SUV. Robinson had been shot in the back of the head and was clinging to life, a bullet lodged in his forehead. You shot him, a witness heard somebody say from inside the vehicle in a flurry of expletives that were yelled in the SUV before it led off. Interviews with friends, witnesses, and police revealed an alcohol-fueled night among friends that began at a popular Fort Collins bar, led to a college after-party, and ended at the medical center of the Rockies. Police arrested Robinson's friend, Eddie Johnson, 19, also of Denver, who was sitting in the front passenger seat of the SUV. That interesting to me. The front passenger seat. Kid was shot. He was in the back, right? An accident? <laughs> Interviews with friends. Oh, wait. <laughs> friends called the shooting a drunk mistake, which I believe it probably was, that left Robinson nearly paralyzed and Johnson sitting in a jail cell. When police interviewed Jordan Hancock, Johnson and others inside the SUV that morning say they misled investigators, misled them. They lied to them and gave them false information. In a possible, almost homicide investigation, they lied to the police, okay? They misled investigators, telling them the shot was fired from outside the vehicle and that no one inside the SUV had a gun. That's according to the court record. We know we didn't get the whole story from anyone involved that night. Well, you should have pressed for that story, don't you think? If it was anyone but the mayor's son, I believe they would have pressed a little harder. But um, I'm jaded, so <laughs> forgive me. And, you know, he's a kid. I forgive him. Stupid things happen. But we have a mayor who right now is, is using every chance he can to fight gang violence, right? And and that's the excuse for everything now. All of a sudden they have these shootings and they're going to use that to roll out things they were already planning very long time ago. And already have rolled out, actually. Um, but they had to come forward because they're going to start making arrests. They're going to start taking children away. They're going to start cracking down and cracking skulls and infringing on your rights. And you're going to thank them for it until it comes to your door, okay? <sighs> There's ways to stop crime and they know the ways. And their initiatives, their, their agenda. I mean, even the name of the gang thing. I don't even know what to call it. The thing. The surveillance. Uh, grid right? It's called grid. It's like sheep, that like homeland security drill. I mean, how stupid are we? Oh, they name everything like that. There's dumb, the deep underground military bases that, oh, so, anyway. Yeah, grid has nothing to do with the uh, grid that they are putting in and have already put in. And the Hitachi patents that I was talking about months ago, the halo cameras, the red light cameras, the $9 million they afforded to that, it's not to catch speeders, and I told you that. I asked them about it. They deny these things, and then they roll it out when it's convenient for them. And I haven't checked the numbers yet, but I'm going to compare them today, of crime rates. And I have a feeling that it hasn't gone up at all. You have just seen more of it. Seen more of it, meaning not that there's more of it. You have seen more of it. The media controls your thought processes. And if you are in that, that little area of uh, reality, it's very hard to snap out of it, but you need to snap out of it because everything that is going in, everything is to enslave you. It is not to free you or protect you, not in any way. This is not to end gang violence. Do you really think they care about that? They have all the data on the gang members that they need. They arrest them all the time. They use them for informants all the time. They have them in their little hands probably every morning in their pocket because they pay them to get information. They know who they are, they know where they live, they know what they do. And I guarantee you, they have everything in place to gather the evidence they need without infringing on innocent people's rights. They want to step up surveillance, they want to track every track and log every license plate. And these Hitachi patents that go along with this Halo camera thing. And by the way, the 15 new Halo cameras just go back to the Hitachi data systems um, contract when they passed the new red light legislation a few months ago. Go back to that and see how many cameras were afforded in that bill. It was 15. Isn't that, isn't that interesting that it's the same number that are dedicated to this 
crime fighting collaboration with the FBI and you know what the FBI just rolled out a little while ago right the facial recognition and they're gonna collaborate with everybody they're collaborating with community members even clergy members so even your church is not a safe place so they will be taking more kids away they just mentioned that real quick that's a real good idea guys because we know that the outcomes for children who are taken from their ho homes are really great. They really do a lot better when you take them from their home. So glad you're stepping that up. <laughs> the community, the Whittier community, does not come out in spades and fight against this happening to you. They are trapping you. And they're trapping all of us. This involves all of us. None of us are free of it. And I'm sure that I will be targeted. But I do speak out in this forum about corruption and things that I think people need to be aware of. And just like I say, Hickenlooper and the Denver's Road Home and the Fort Lyon place, that is not what it is not what it's propped up to be. Because I have a real hard time believing that the man who outlaws homelessness makes it a crime to be homeless, to feed the homeless, for the homeless to even sit for a second. That was a bill that I mean, they were trying to get a bill that says, hey, they can sit down and rest, right? Just for a minute. No, no, move it along. FEMA train, move it along. We have public transportation for you guys all lined up. Go on. No resting, no resting for the homeless. No. That man is not doing anything to help the homeless. So I'm very suspicious when I see these benevolent projects popping up from him, with his name all over him. With him saying this is the absolute most important thing that we get through legislation when we go to Washington. That was four years ago, four or five years ago, when gun control was the major issue. No, he was saying, Fort Lyon, Fort Lyon, why is that? Well, I'll go into that later. I'm going to get back to Jordan Hancock here. The story that nobody heard. <laughs> it's a cool story. It's an interesting story. It is the mayor's son involved in gang violence, possibly. And I think possibly I'm not saying he was because I wasn't there um, and because there isn't much evidence gathered because why would you want to gather evidence against the mayor's son when you have um, what is his name Eddie right there why even bother okay I'm not so sure Eddie did it I'm not sure Jordan did it but the way that the people are positioned in this car seems suspicious to me that um, the guy way in the front seat turned around and shot somebody it would be more like this isn't talked about what happened to the good old days when scandal hit the news and it was all we could do is talk about this talk about that i remember scandal oh what was it oh yes involving mayor hancock and a phone log record of him and the what is it the oh i forget which one it was but it's a, a pretty prominent escort service that i think is still in operation um and they had his cell phone his personal cell phone number as a regular client um, girls who were interviewed knew him very well. He was a regular client and, and no big deal. And I don't really care. I really don't care what people do in their personal private lives. And if you're the mayor and you're working hard, psh, more power to you. But don't be someone who is claiming to enforce the law when your family members and yourself don't always seem to be following the law. And then it makes me very suspicious when you know there's this bribery um, accusation and I'm seeing in the pay in the paper here it says convicted payroll tax cheat is informant in Denver bribery cases that's an interesting headline well if he's an informant used by the Denver police or whoever is investigating that's their problem what do you think informants are they're dirty little rats so they're gonna have criminal backgrounds and they're probably gonna lie half the time they use that evidence against anyone else and there's probably some legitimacy to this because I know I was looking over all the DIA stuff going, how can they possibly be needing this much money? Either they're doing a project out there that we don't know about, okay, which that's what I think. Um, they're not, it's not full of disclosure what's actually going on. Or people are getting paid. And when I see the city council just pass, you know, budget after budget, you know, increase after increase in these contracts without much discussion, it makes me think that somebody's getting paid. Somebody's paying someone off to get these contracts through. And there's money that is being skimmed off the top. And that's just reasonable to think that. 
If not, please explain why we need such huge amounts of money for these contracts. What is going on at DIA? And people, you should look into the city council bills for DIA, for out at Red Rocks, the RFID repeaters. Um, all of these things are very interesting. And they all play into a little plan called Agenda 21. We are going to look, and I always say, it's the Hunger Games. That is your future. Watch the Hunger Games, how they're segregated into these little, like, communities of completely po impoverished people that are totally controlled by a ruthless police state. And that is what is becoming of us already. It's disgusting. We have no power. Take your power back now. Or you have lost it forever. And I don't think we have a chance now, honestly. How can they say they're going to take more kids away? When recently we have found out that, that people don't even go to check on their kids. People are dying in, in care. Because, because we can't hold them accountable enough to do simple things. Like one, not place them with a known sex offender. They had one of their caseworkers testify that she was told to lie. She placed the kid with a known sex offender, and the boy was raped for like over a year by his father, who was known to do that. And they were informed by the whole family members, all of them, several people, told to lie about that. Okay? Then the last one, a baby dies. They were supposed to be checking on that house, and she said she did check on him. It's totally, you know, fine. And then the baby dies, and then they find out she's been lying. But, oh, they did an investigation. They found out, oh, within the whole department, that was the only time, that one time, that one caseworker, that was the only one that they lied about ever. <laughs> no, a lot of them were going unchecked, I guarantee you, and it's probably the worst of the worst. They remove children when they don't need to, traumatize them, and ruin their lives. Okay? Because this is my forte. <laughs> this is what I do. I work with aging out foster teens. And I just started this by the And this is a big problem. But when you take kids away, you better make sure you know what you're doing and that you're placing them somewhere safe. They're just haphazardly saying that they're going to just have to take some more kids away. Oh, well, we'll just check in and just take them away if you're a gang member or whatever. What constitutes being a gang member? What is the crime that has to be committed? We don't have open courts in family court. All of these things are very, very dangerous, people. Be careful what you wish for and do not get swept up into this, this whirlwind of, of emotion. I don't want to see gang violence. I don't want to see people get shot. And I hope that amongst your own community, you guys can start that conversation of how do we stop this so that we can stop the police state. Because if there's not crime going on, there's no excuse for these kind of surveillance tools being used against innocent people. And I'm one of the taxpayers that's the innocent people. I pay my taxes. I go to work every day. I have an upstanding life. And I work very hard to keep that life upstanding. And trust me, it wasn't always that way. But I enjoy my life and I want to be able to live in a world of free freedom. Everything we were promised as children in America is being stripped from us. Everything that makes America great is stripped from us. When you commit crimes and you give them the excuse to jackboot you, because they will put that big black boot right on your neck. They don't give us, they don't care about you. They don't care about us. And just because Mayor Hancock is black, and I like him, he's a very nice guy. Very nice guy, whatever. Personally, I have nothing against the guy. He seems very personable, very nice. I've met him briefly, and he was polite to me. But I think that I think that this police department and this whole government in Colorado has has got to clean up their act. And I hope that I can appeal to their sense of morality. I don't know what else I can. I can't say, oh well, the the taxpayers are going to hold you accountable. Obviously, they haven't for years. Columbine happened, and nothing has happened since then with the loads of evidence that we have against several, I don't know how many people. And we have Mark Taylor, who's still victim, still being persecuted by our own government. They locked him up, they drugged him, and I don't even know the state of him right now because I haven't checked. But the last I heard, he was still being forcibly drugged in a mental institution, or in a halfway house here in Denver. A Columbine victim, why, why is he being drugged? Oh, 
Because they made up some fake story, which I know it was fake. Okay? Don't lie to yourself. This man is a hero. He wrote a book, and he sued the makers of um, that Zoloft or whatever that Eric was on when he, at the time of the shootings, and he manipulated that medicine to make him psychotic. All of these shootings, they are driven by these SSRI drugs. And then we beg for more mental health services. It's another thing that just bothers me so bad. They, they say they want to help drug addicts. They want to help mentally ill. You can't help them by drugging them. You can't help them by locking them up and giving them a label and sh telling them that they are less than you. That is not compassionate care. That is not help. The help they need, it doesn't come in a pill bottle and it doesn't come in an institution. It comes from the heart of their family and their friends connecting with them. And that's where we lose everything, is we don't take on the responsibility of a heartfelt connection with our fellow man. And we look to institutions and governments to regulate, to pass laws, to stop violence that is caused by unrest in our souls. You can't legislate that. You can't surveil that away. It has to come from you, from you and me and God. And only when we accept God's help and work together will we ever stop it. We can be controlled. We can slow it down and punish people and scare people into submission. Somewhat. But that will not ever stop violence. And violence, violence comes in many forms, people, not just physical violence. When you have no privacy, no freedom, no free will, I believe that is an attack, a violent attack upon your soul from the state. And I believe they are criminal. I believe that the ACLU in this state is awful. And I'm calling you out. If you want to work with me, I would love to work with you. But where are the good lawyers? Where are all the constitutional law students? I mean, what is wrong with people? And I would, I would urge anyone who has a backbone and some brains and a little bit of credentials behind you, come on, make a name for yourself. Get some kind of freedom back for us. Expose these people for what they really are. It's not good to take people's children, period, okay? A child in the worst abusive situation does better as far as outcomes over the long run. If you look at statistics, I'm sorry, that's the truth. They do better than ones that have been taken and placed into the best, wonderful, loving, nurturing, well-off family, adopted, the whole bit. They do better in that abusive home than they do when you take them. I don't really have the answer for why that is so severe that taking them is, but it is. So you need to be very cautious when you're talking about taking children. Because that is a life that you are potentially destroying. At least one. And actually it's the whole family usually. And that goes on into the community. Those people have more kids and they're damaged people once you take one of them away. And that kid that you took is no better off. You need to work within the families to help them. You know how this stops? It's economic problems driving this. The violence, gangs welfare dependency, all of these things, drug abuse. I mean, people who have jobs, go to jobs every day, they don't have that much time to be drug addicts, okay? There's all kinds of things that could be changed to stem this violence. But they wanted to roll this out, and they're going to. And let me tell you that those Hitachi cameras have triggering devices. This is very illegal, people. They can put in somebody's name, say mine. They know my driver's license, my plate number. Now they have the plate readers, they have the facial recognition, they have all that. Now they're finally admitting it. Um, but they put in my name into their system as a trigger. So every time I go past one of these, these cameras, they're going to take a picture of me. They will then know who I'm with, where I'm going, what my, my routine is. And there's all kinds of sinister things. If you want to get into the deep and the deep, deep possibilities, I won't go there because most people can't handle that. But educate yourself. A little bit more about the technology that's out there. Facial recognition from three shots they can do CGI to recreate your image in such a fashion you would think you were there. Now just imagine how that could be used against people. 
they can take your DNA and they can repli they can replicate DNA. Okay? You see how this could be potentially used against you. I'm not saying they would go that far, but possibilities are there and why why do I have to feel like I'm under constant surveillance? I'm just a citizen who speaks out on YouTube. But I fear for my life at times because I've had death threats, I've had all kinds of things and implied threats from people who should be protecting my rights. And I see the police lying, I see staged events on TV, things that I know are staged, I can tell, I can tell, laymen can tell. You're lying to, to people who trust you. We shouldn't have to pick things apart, we should just be able to trust you. To know that, yeah, you're gonna lie to us a little bit on the campaign and whatever, that is expected, whatever. You get a little bit of kickback money, want, whatever. Your family gets a little bit of, you know, goodies. I don't care. But this downright, like, evil deception against people and humanity in general, we are not the enemy. Let's really look at who the criminals are. Just because they're not behind bars and they're not in an orange jumpsuit, does not mean that they have not committed horrific crimes. And the crime of taking away somebody's solitude, somebody's peace in their own home, making them feel like they are always watched and prisoners in this grid, that I think is a crime against humanity that, that it's not on the books, but it should be. And it should be punishable by, by the most extreme means. It would never be, but that is paramount to a traitor, to me. You are betraying the American people and the Constitution, which second to God's law, the Constitution, I think is almost a perfect document. And if it was upheld, we could live free. If we could count on the laws to be upheld, but we don't. We see law enforcement right in front of our faces abusing power and and committing crimes. A lot of these things with the surveillance, the things that they do to you, it's a crime. It is a crime to, to record me in my own home without my permission. I don't care what your policy says, it is a crime. And that's just one of many, but anyway. I'm just very disappointed. And when you go to the ballot box, vote for anyone but Mayor Hancock. I, really like the guy. It, it saddens me to say that because I actually like the guy. But I don't trust him. <laughs> Not that I trust any politician, but um, this, <laughs> it's insulting to my intelligence. We already know this. We already knew this. You already denied this to me like months ago, back in September. Okay? Don't buy it. They take one tragedy and they use it to, to push their thing on you. Don't let them push their thing on you. Anyway, much love. God bless.